I'll be uh, talking about uh, deriving insights for your digital business with analytics. Um, uh, so, um, yeah, let's um, uh, go into it. Um, yeah, uh, so uh, who knows about Uber uh, Grayball here? Okay, so there are a few, few, few guys here. Uh, so basically, uh, Grayball is a system that uh, Uber uh, developed in basically for profiling uh, users. So, uh, so one of the one of the uh, the aims were basically to um, uh, to identify uh, government regulators. <laughs> so when they are using it, uh, they basically hide all the cars, and so they can't uh, use the system. So um, yeah, so I have uh, so I have like two reactions on this. So uh, okay, you can't see this. Okay, uh, anyway, that's Darth Vader. That's what's supposed to be there. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so uh, basically, so if you go down the path of uh, uh, to the darkness, it's hard to come back. So uh, and uh, anyway, uh, so. Uh, Still, uh, what Uber has done is uh, still impressive. So, um, so it's a bit of sophisticated set of, uh, bit of software that they have done uh, to do this. And uh, so, it's unlikely that they uh, designed this from the beginning when they were uh, doing the their software system. So, it's more like an afterthought that they uh, uh, like put in and. Uh, um, so uh, that shows that they had like uh, uh, very good flexibility in their architecture, in their uh, platform, in introducing a feature like that and seamlessly working. So, uh, uh, so uh, that uh, basically uh, that is the promise that is given by digital businesses. So uh, uh, digital businesses basically it bridges, uh, so it merges. Uh, between the uh, the digital and the physical worlds, in giving um, uh, the, the the flexibility uh, uh, in uh, creating uh, uh, your solutions. So uh, basically, with um, different changes coming in and so on, um, uh, you can easily create changes and update your system uh, with this approach. So. Uh, so Uber is definitely an example of uh, such a digital business. So, so it's basically a digital platform they used uh, to um, uh, which analyze their digital business in uh, creating this flexibility. Um, uh, so uh, in that way, the idea is uh, you can use your uh, IT assets. Uh, uh, effectively uh, now uh, in creating new opportunities for uh, fulfilling your uh, business requirements. So uh, one way of creating a, a digital business is, is explained in this uh, uh, book called Connected Business, Connected Company, uh, sorry, uh, by Dave Gray. So he uh, introduces this concept called uh, uh, digital building blocks for your IT assets, or pods, as they say. So these pods basically represent a, a, a different uh, uh, IT group or technology group, uh, which will contain their own API streams that they expose uh, to be used by others. Uh, and they also have their own um, control system to optimize its behavior. Um, so that's a pod. And uh, so a digital business is made up of uh, several of these pods uh, to basically create a, a global system. And they communicate with each, uh, with, uh, each other using the streams and uh, APIs. So, and all of them together create a global control loop. And um, that's the main idea. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so, uh, in creating this, uh, the pods, the pods and the global control loop, uh, the main uh, fa the the main item there is AI and analytics. So, AI and AI and analytics will basically program these 
control loops. And uh, it is widely known that AI and analytics will be the uh, uh, ne next uh, def uh, defensible mode, basically. Um, <clears throat> so um, let's go into uh, how analytics is used in digital businesses. Uh, so for example, like, uh, let's look at like, some uh, di uh, digital inspired products and uh, revenue streams. Like uh, if you look at like the early example, Uber, uh, Airbnb, Amazon Go, and so on. So you will see that uh, those are all um, new ways uh, of doing business with these digital platforms. Like uh, Uber is known as the biggest taxi company in the world without owning any uh, taxis. And uh, Airbnb, the biggest hotel chain without owning any hotels, and so on. So that's like, a, like an amazing feat there itself. So, uh, and, uh, so uh, other things as product as service, like uh, uh, there are even things like light as a service, like, uh, and so on. Like, uh, uh, like things like if you want to rent a jackhammer and it'll contain like IoT sensors and so on to know like how much you use the jackhammer and so on. So it has gone to that level uh, of efficiency. And, um, also, uh, other things as, uh, as uh, for example, telcos know where all the people are. Uh, credit card companies all know all the transaction you do for like other sales analysis and so on. And um, another thing, if you look at um, how uh, Google Maps traffic works, so uh, like you yourself is providing the data to get your own service. Like you are getting the traffic updates because you are actually giving the data. So it's a ingenious idea at the end. So, um, so those are all the uh, uh, opportunities you can get from this new paradigm. And uh, other uh, ways are yeah, you can get more close to your customers. Like uh, using uh, analytics, you can uh, predict some of the uh, like uh, pain points customers may get. Uh, like. Uh, uh, so you can optimize the user experience basically, so um, and give uh, users a much much better uh, uh, service uh, using these features, um, and uh, also you can do optimizations like, uh, uh, for example, uh, fraud is a, like a uh, uh, very uh, big. Uh, uh, cost for a lot of um, uh, financial organizations and so on. So to, um, to reduce that aspect, you can use uh, analytics effectively. So, and uh, also things like predictive maintenance. Like uh, even before you know something will, uh, something actually fails, you can predict that uh, this is going in that way. For example, if you think about uh, nowadays jet engines and so on. So jet engine has uh, like thousands of sensors inside that. And, uh, the, the, the jet engine manufacturer can uh, figure out a fault or uh, uh, like impending fault before it actually happens uh, when it's in an aircraft and so on. So it has come to that level due to uh, this connectivity and the analytics capabilities it has. Uh, so uh, let's see how we program these uh, pod control loops. Uh, so this is basically the programming model. So um, we'll uh, go through each of these items uh, in detail. So uh, first is uh, KPIs or key performance indicators. Uh, it's basically a single number which represents a certain uh, 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 like a value that will say something to you, like uh, like a quality or like a. Uh, quantitative value or qualitative value, basically. So, uh, for example, as it says here, revenue per uh, employee, uh, the average response time, TPS, and so on. So, um, so in that way, uh, so the KPI is the first thing you would uh, derive or define first in uh, uh, implementing a control loop. So, and uh, then to actually calculate the KPIs, you want the data. So uh, data collection is done by uh, data streams. Uh, so, so you can um, have APIs to create streams like from, 
for example, HTTP data stream, JMS Kafka, SMSs, anything. So, um, or from IoT devices like MQTT and so on. So, um, so all of these will create data streams for you to analyze. So that's the basic building block you will need to do the other aspects. And uh, for example, WC2 products themselves have multiple streams being analyzed when we use our products. So uh, now we have the KPIs and the data. So now it, it's the time to analyze them. So basically, so uh, these control loops are by, uh, inherently they are real time because when things happen, you have to respond to it. So, um, uh, so they must be uh, processed in real time. And uh, also batch processing also basically uh, plays a helper function. So uh, it probably will uh, analyze some data in REST and create some uh, information to be used by the uh, real time pipeline. So, um, so uh, the way to query these uh, control loops uh, are using this streaming SQL. So one of the easiest way to do it. So um, because uh, everyone knows SQL, so uh, 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 easy transition for the real time uh, processing would be to uh, create a, a real time processing language based on SQL. So they can have a uh, easy transition and they can easily go into this. Um, and uh, so if you have any other advanced use case that you can't do with the streaming SQL, you can of course go into deep by using uh, other extension mechanisms. And of course, uh, because of SQL, we have, we can underlying uh, do some optimizations based on the user queries that are given. <coughs> so, uh, let me go through some of the streaming SQL concepts. So if you already know SQL, you know like mo almost like half of what's there in streaming SQL. So um, it's also still have uh, like filtering, um, projection capabilities and so on uh, uh, in a, in a uh, similar uh, syntax. And uh, because it's streaming, they don't have like a, a fixed set of uh, data you, uh, you have to work on when it comes to aggregations, joins, and so on. So you always work on a subset of the data. So uh, the subset of data is basically what we have are windows. So windows, we can give like a time window, a certain length window, and so on. So with that, you do your joins, and so on. Um, and also at the end, you also, uh, you, it also uh, let you do uh, uh, complex um, pattern recognition also. So using this uh, streaming SQL, you can do um, things like detect a specific pattern in the data event stream. Uh, so those are possible with the streaming SQL. Uh, then the other part is, uh, so is uh, logic only enough like that? So, uh, but um, for example, if you want to write a program to drive a car, can you do it with conventional logic? Like more, like we can say like 80% of the uh, uh, the work can be done with simple logic on how to say, how to drive it, how to keep it on the lane and so on and so on. But the next 20% is the hard part, how to do the finer details. So this is very hard to be done with usual logic. So uh, that can be filled with uh, AI and machine learning. So basically what it does is it gets a whole lot of inputs you train them and make them create the model. So the model is basically like a complicated uh, program that they have written to, for you. So it's like a very complex if else uh, statements or something similar that uh, you get after you get the model. So you apply the data to it and uh, you get the result from it. Uh, uh, so that's how you would use machine learning to go to the next step. <coughs> So um, there are two ways on in using um, uh, machine learning algorithms. Uh, one is uh, using uh, batch processing. That means you uh, get a specific set of uh, input data. You do a batch process on it. Uh, you build the model and use that model in your real-time pipeline. So the, the model is fixed and you apply the events to that and get a result. And the other way is uh, you can use streaming ML algorithms. So uh, 
for example, we uh, support like Markov chain regression clustering using uh, streaming. That means it updates the uh, machine learning model as it goes. So uh, this is ideal when you have a constant stream of events coming in, and so the model never uh, basically uh, uh, basically uh, goes out of scope, or it always is up to date. <coughs> So, um, also another thing is uh, anomaly detection operators. So, um, uh, these also should be like uh, something that should be there built in. So, to detect uh, like anomalous situation in the control loop. For example, our W3SP contains several of these operators, uh, like for clustering, classification, Markov chains, and so on. So, for more information, you can read our white paper on fault detection. It contains like in depth information on that. Um, an another thing is uh, what um, uh, we have developed over time is our uh, incremental analytics. Uh, so basically, uh, so we created that uh, this with uh, batch analytics first. Um, so uh, what happens is when you are doing batch analytics, um, when the data is always coming in, you want to do a specific analytics operation over and over again. So uh, when the data is updated, in the usual sense, we will do the batch operation again through all the data. So, uh, but that's not optimal when the processing time always increases with the growth of data. So uh, we have um, uh, implemented this approach where um, we have created algorithms where you can do it incrementally. So you process uh, batch by batch in different granularities and you uh, merge them uh, when doing a uh, basically a query. So you have uh, data process basically pre-aggregated in uh, different um, uh, granular, granular levels. So you use this to do multiple queries and uh, uh, like combine them and give a quick result. And um, this approach we have uh, implemented in our uh, stream processor product also. So we do it in now in the real-time pipeline. So we basically do the aggregation, pre-aggregation when the events are coming in and we store them in the disk. Uh, and we do a lookup. So what this did was uh, the thing that we earlier did with uh, batch analytics. We can do like almost 90% of the uh, work using our stream processor itself. So it basically, um, for most of the cases, it, it uh, deprecated the use of batch analytics for our uh, main use cases. <coughs> and uh, another thing is, uh, a main thing we need is uh, the alerts. So in the control loop, when we get a certain situation, we want to be um, alerted immediately. So uh, uh, rather than we looking at a dashboard, the dashboard is another way of looking for certain situations that are happening. Uh, but if you want to get a notification immediately, we can use alerts. So uh, this is also done through streaming SQL queries. So uh, that can like done via email, SMS, pages, and so on. So and um, so uh, also another uh, 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 requirement they should have is so they should have very low false positive. So if you are always getting a lot of false positive alerts and so on, that's not good. So we should always uh, try to design the systems that uh, these qualities are met. <coughs> so uh, the other one is a dashboard. So a dashboard is something you should have uh, like at a quick glance, you can see the status of the system. So uh, like give a high level on how your system is doing, uh, the KPIs mainly, and if needed, you can drill down and see uh, the finer details of it. So uh, that's the main idea of a dashboard. And um, after all this, processing is done, so when uh, these processing are happening, uh, to communicate between our pods, uh, the, the, the basically the, the IT assets. So uh, you want to expose those data through APIs, so they can uh, be communicated, uh, they can communicate with each other. So uh, these are done with APIs. So uh, uh, well-defined APIs can be used to do this communication. And, uh, and usually, um, Organization use an API management uh, system to do this to be able to uh, handle the management uh, the aspects of the APIs like 
authorization, other uh, security aspects, and so on. So um, that's how basically the communication is happening. <coughs> so uh, so let's look at how WStream processor comes into the picture. Uh, so what we earlier have, so actually at the moment we have is a data analytics server, which is made up of uh, the real-time processing unit, uh, uh, the Siddhi engine, and uh, the batch processing using uh, up Spark and machine learning with Spark MLE. So uh, with our upcoming next release, what we have done is we have uh, made it more leaner and uh, made a single uh, profile which has the real time uh, the the processing uh, mainly so which consists of the streaming complex event processing uh, streaming incremental time series uh, aggregations which is uh, what i explained earlier which does the which does most of the work we need uh, in our earlier batch processing uh, but not all so um, if you want like um, advanced batch processing cable, you still have to uh, go to a full-fledged batch processing uh, framework. Uh, but um, part of the requirements are met with this feature. Uh, then we have the streaming machine learning. So uh, stream machine learning, again, so we have uh, created a few uh, streaming algorithms, and those will be available out of the box in the stream processor uh, product. <coughs> So uh, basically, why the uh, W0 stream processor? So uh, it basically gives you all the aspects you need to create the, uh, the control loops for your pods, the, 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 the aspects I just mentioned. And uh, it creates a very intuitive and a powerful sh uh, streaming SQL language, uh, the CD language, and uh, dashboards, and more. So we have other features like distributed computing, and so on, that's uh, available out of the box. And also, performance-wise, we can provide like 100K plus events per second uh, with HA setup with only two nodes. And you can scale um, uh, much more by using uh, our distributed processing capabilities, especially with, uh, when using with uh, Kafka, and so on. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, uh, so uh, the, so uh, for a summary, so uh, what we talked about, so digital business give you the ultimate flexibility in uh, creating your uh, uh, the future businesses, and uh, and analytics and AI are part of uh, a key part of that. So you had to always uh, think of that when you are uh, basically architecting your system, and um, so. Uh, and we discuss how to build the control loops, and at the end, that uh, how they provide you the intelligence that you need uh, to continue. Uh, so, uh, so all of these uh, are then given by our WS2 stream processor product. Um, yeah, that's it for uh, my presentation. Uh, thank you. Any questions? <laughs> uh, DAS is dead means it's still there. So uh, uh, what we did was um, we did remove the uh, the inbuilt Spark features. So um, so okay, what really happened was so we are just renaming the product. It is still the same kind of function as we have, but we removed the batch processing uh, features uh, that are inbuilt to the product now. But we can still. Uh, uh, like connect with the external uh, Spark clusters and so on, and do the same operations still. So what we uh, figured was it's really not needed to have it in, uh, inside the product itself, because we get the same functionality where we, if we integrate it with the external system. And we are then not limited to only Spark. We can use other batch processing systems as well. So yeah. <coughs> Hello, excuse yeah. me. If I want to use Elasticsearch as an external analytics, uh, do you provide some support? Um, not at this moment. So we, uh, there's an extension point that you can use. For example, uh, at the moment in this release, we are uh, providing support for Solar, uh, Solar Cloud. So you can use that for your indexing aggregations, 
and so on. So uh, uh, at the moment, we don't have support for that, but it's, uh, it can be easily extended to create another connector to connect to uh, Elasticsearch as well. Good evening. Congrats for the, yeah. the speaking. Thank you. One mm, question about the machine learning engine. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that it's very, it's a very great component in embedded inside the WS2 data analytics. Uh, when I create a, a new model of machine learning, learning the, or unlearned, yeah. and the data is pro is provided by a real time stream, uh, does it the the model of the uh, machine learning engine uh, recomputed, reprocessed in uh, each moment, uh, or it's needed to create a manual uh, operation that uh, um, process the data and uh, provide a new model of the uh, machine learning? So uh, the model. So there are two ways. So uh, one is you can create an existing built model to it. Mm -hmm. So that's the uh, the earlier way we had like. That's the way you can, for example, use Spark ML, create the model, uh, convert to a PMML, basically, and have the model there. And uh, or else, so in the new SP, uh, we have the way to uh, uh, have incrementally um, updating models. OK, so, so it's, is it possible to have uh, an updated model yes. events by events? Okay. Exactly, yes. OK, yeah. thank you. Yeah.